60 million years ago, giant predatory animals dominated the vast swampy forests of South America. Titanoboa was a colossal snake species. It roamed through the large rivers and the low-lying swampy lands of northern Colombia, ruling the primeval forests until it went extinct due to extreme earth events. But what would happen if the Titanoboa, the largest snake ever discovered, were still alive today? This video will discuss some interesting hypotheses related to that. In the warm forests of the Amazon, one of the heaviest and longest snakes in South America and the world exists. The green anaconda is a water-loving creature, large enough to swallow a full-grown deer, a sheep, or even the largest cat of South America, the jaguar. With its professional camouflage abilities, it hides in shallow rivers and flooded grasslands to ambush prey and suffocate victims with its body, using its powerful muscles. Nearly 9 meters long, this giant reptile is a terrifying nightmare. However, there was an even larger monster that once lived and hunted in these dense forests. During the Paleocene epoch, which began about 66 million years ago, the king of this ancient world was not the Tyrannosaurus rex or Spinosaurus but the largest snake in South America. Partly due to fluctuating CO2 levels in the atmosphere, some places on Earth were scorched during the last period of the Cretaceous, which was the last great era of the dinosaurs. However, temperatures even rose higher after a global catastrophe known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event. At the end of the Cretaceous period, a large asteroid likely crashed into the warm waters along the coast of present-day Mexico. Over hundreds of thousands of years, the impact and its aftermath wiped out much of life on Earth. Forest fires raged globally, tsunamis devastated coastlines, and volcanoes erupted with massive smoke columns that increased the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, making the Earth even hotter. Under these conditions, the tropical region of South America became a noisy greenhouse. The dense forests in the flooded lands of Colombia, Venezuela, and Brazil were nourished by nearly daily rainfall. During the wettest periods, these forests became flooded for weeks or even months, covering the gloomy swamps in mud deep enough to submerge a person from head to toe. In these ecosystems, cold-blooded animals such as snakes, turtles, and crocodiles could grow to double or triple their size. Cold-blooded animals cannot generate their own heat, so they depend on the environment to raise their body temperature. Numerous cold-blooded animals thrived in the hot tropical forests from the middle to the end of the Paleocene epoch. The most notable among them was the giant snake Titanoboa, classified as Titanoboa serajonensis, also known as the giant serpent from Serajon. This massive semi-aquatic constrictor was a creature unlike any boa in history, based on about 30 specimens and various ecological data. Biologists believe that the Titanoboa could have reached an extremely impressive length of up to 13 meters. To compare, the longest modern python is the reticulated python in Indonesia, which is said to be about 10 meters long. If the Titanoboa were still alive today, it would almost certainly hold the record for the longest python existing on the planet. Besides its astonishing length, the Titanoboa also weighed up to 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds, far surpassing all other python and snake species on Earth. The Titanoboa is a combination of the boa constrictor and the anaconda, and biologists have not been able to determine which of the two this prehistoric creature more closely resembles. The Titanoboa shares anatomical features with the boa constrictor but behaves more like the anaconda. Both spend most of their time soaking in shallow waters. While hunting, the Titanoboa might have concealed its massive body in layers of mud and murky water, slowly ambushing its prey, clamping down and suffocating life out of its victim's body. With such size and strength, the Titanoboa could capture and kill larger predators in its ecosystem, including crocodiles and even other snake species. Until the late Paleocene epoch, 
the Titanoboa disappeared from the tropical regions and lowlands of northern Colombia. The exact cause of this species' extinction remains unclear, but it may have been affected by sudden changes in Earth's climate when the average global temperature rapidly increased by about 5 degrees Celsius. This event is known as the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. This global event caused widespread extinctions, mass migrations, and disruptions to both marine and terrestrial ecosystems, including the swamps and dense forests of South America. If the Titanoboa had survived after the Paleocene event, it would have faced many more challenges over the millions of years since then. About 34 million years ago, a transition marked the beginning of the first major ice age in glaciation on a global scale. Ice sheets around the planet's poles expanded significantly, and the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere decreased, leading to a significant drop in temperature even in the hottest and most humid regions of the world. These colder conditions threatened large cold-blooded animals like the Titanoboa, reducing their body temperature and slowing down their metabolic processes. Even if the Titanoboa had adapted to these climate changes, it could still have been outcompeted by the many mammalian species that were becoming dominant globally. Filling the ecosystems once occupied by dinosaurs, mammals came to dominate dry grasslands, forests on Earth, and many other natural areas. But no species could threaten animals more than humans. Humans have lived in South America for thousands of years, hunting and killing animals including those many times larger than us during the last ice age. About 11,700 years ago, human hunting drove giant mammals like the saber-toothed tiger and the woolly mammoth to the brink of extinction. In terms of pure physicality, humans could never compete with a large monster like the Titanoboa, but by hunting in groups and using tools, ancient humans could have been a significant threat if the Titanoboa lived during this time. Somehow, if the Titanoboas could have overcome all these obstacles and survived in the world to this day, their impact could be so profound as to be unpredictable. Top predators can have a significant impact on the food chain. The ecological balance would be affected as the prey population becomes more limited. For example, if the Titanoboa were still alive today, its presence could affect the populations of swamp-dwelling animals like turtles and crocodiles. A decrease in numbers could cause unforeseen and irreversible consequences for the local food chain. Over millions of years, it has become unpredictable how a top predator like this could have influenced the evolution of the natural world. But it is certain that these giant pythons would also have impacted our lives. Only a few terrestrial carnivores such as bears or big cats are known to attack humans. But if the Titanoboa appeared, it would surely be ranked among the most dangerous. Imagine stepping into your backyard, but instead of a common small snake, there is a 13-meter-long monster slithering down from the bushes. The Titanoboa is large enough to wrap its massive body around a car, overturn small boats, and easily swallow you whole. The fact that modern snake species like the anaconda rarely attack humans is well known. However, the Titanoboa, being significantly larger, may have developed a preference for consuming larger prey. According to the hypothesis, there are only a few places on Earth where the Titanoboa could live, such as the marshy forests in the southern United States. This natural area acts as a barrier for the Mississippi River. Over one million hectares of gentle lowlands make up the Atchafalaya Basin. This is the largest wetland in the United States. In terms of climate and diversity, Atchafalaya is similar to northern Colombia about 58 million years ago. These forests and swamps could be suitable for all the largest cold-blooded carnivorous animals. Further east, another potential environment for Titanoboa can be found. This is the subtropical wetland region in southern Florida known as the Everglades. High temperatures and frequent flooding have turned these vast marshes into a breeding ground for a diverse network of plants and animals. In these dense mangrove forests, there are over 50 distinct species of reptiles, 
including snakes, lizards, and crocodiles, all of which would be ideal natural prey for the Titanoboa. Assuming the Titanoboa survived to the modern era, it could still live in the vast dense forests of Colombia, slithering through the flooded forests and warm rivers around Colombia. Today, the Amazon rainforest may be drier, cooler, and less wooded than millions of years ago, but it remains a humid and warm tropical region all year round. With an average temperature of 22 to 28 degrees Celsius and annual rainfall of up to 200 centimeters, the Amazon rainforest is a fairy tale land teeming with a dense ecosystem of flora and fauna, home to many creatures yet to be classified by humans. Theoretically, the Titanoboa could also hunt and live somewhere deep within these thriving forests. However, the Titanoboa of today may no longer resemble the monsters of ancient times. Some animal species, like the African lungfish, have survived and remained almost unchanged throughout 400 million years of history. However, the African lungfish is an exception rather than the rule. Most populations of organisms have gradually changed to cope with the fluctuations in their corresponding ecosystems. Over time, the strongest and most resilient creatures will survive and reproduce naturally, passing on their genes. Meanwhile, the weaker ones will decline and become extinct. During the mid to late Paleocene epoch, the largest and heaviest titanoboas may have died out because they could not cope with the global cooling, loss of habitat, and other changes within their populations. However, the smallest titanoboas, which required less energy to survive, might have lived past the Paleocene epoch and passed their genetic traits on to future generations. After millions of years of natural selection, the modern relatives of Titanoboa might resemble today's pythons more than their ancestors. Millions of years have passed since Titanoboas slithered through the dense forests of South America. The fossils we study today are a chilling reminder that the right environment at the right time can create favorable conditions for the most astonishing miracles of evolution. That time and place have long passed, but even after millions of years, the Titanoboa remains the largest and most fearsome snake to have ever roamed the forests of the earth.